Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace, double CCA and Cisco Press author. And in this video, I want to give you a glimpse into what's new in CompTIA's Network Plus exam. This is early 2018 when I'm recording this, and CompTIA has recently introduced a new version of the Network Plus exam. This is a certification that's been around a long time. I took this, I guess, back in the 1990s, and I've taken it several times, and there's a brand new version of the exam out, and I want to get you ready for it. First up, there's a new exam number. The prior exam number was N10-006, and the last time I checked, you can still register for that exam on the website. So if you're trying to take the new exam, be careful to register for this one, N10-007. Interestingly, there's not a prerequisite. Some people think that you might have to have the CompTIA a certification first. That is not a requirement. You can, if you want, go straight for the Network Plus exam. CompTIA does recommend that you have some industry experience, though, about 9 to 12 months working with networks. And the structure of the exam is it has 90 questions at a max. You could have fewer questions depending on what set of questions you get, and you'll need to get a passing score of at least 720, but this is on sort of an odd scale. This does not mean 72%. This is on a scale from 100 to 900. And percentage-wise, that equates to about 77.5% that you'll need to get to pass the exam. And for the question types, there are multiple choice questions and performance-based questions. And we'll talk more about the performance-based questions in a moment, and I'll give you a resource to go practice one of those. And that's the general overview, but let's look specifically at the exam objectives that CompTIA has published. First, you might want to go out and download the PDF that CompTIA gives you of all the exam objectives. And I gave you a shortcut link to get to that page. You can go to my website, kwtrain.com slash net plus, the actual plus sign, net plus objectives. And CompTIA requires that you register and give some information to get access to this, but it's free. You can register and download a PDF of all the exam objectives. And when you do, you'll see that 23% of the exam is made up of questions from the category Network Concepts. Here we're talking about basic protocol recognition. Do you know what port number is associated with a specific protocol? SMTP? That's TCP port 25. That's the type of thing to know here, along with things like the OSI model and some basic characteristics of routing and switching. IP addressing, IP version 4, IP version 6, that falls under this category as well, as well as different types of network topologies and types like a local area network, a campus area network, a wide area network. And fundamentals of wireless LANs would come in here too. Do you understand the different wireless standards, the different 802.11 standards? And you'll also want to know about various network services. For example, quite a bit to know about DNS if you take a look at those objectives. You should know a collection of different DNS record types. And that's a fairly big exam category. 23% of your score coming from there. Next up is the infrastructure. 18% of your score comes from here. Here you need to know about things like cabling, different types of network devices like routers and firewalls and bridges and switches. And also some more advanced network devices like next generation firewalls. CompTIA also has a big focus on virtualization in this exam. And you'll need to know a variety of WAN types. In the third major section of the exam, we have network operations, making up 17% of the exam. Here we focus on the day-to-day -day routine things that we need to do as network professionals, such as keeping documentation updated, having disaster recovery plans in place, and some different options for those plans. Another part of our daily routine as network professionals is patching and updating firmware and software on various network devices. And in order to do that, we might need to access network devices remotely. And there's a whole category of topics that you should know concerning different ways to remotely access your network gear. And also different policies like an internet acceptable use policy. That and other policies and best practices, they're categorized under this section. In the fourth section, we have network security, making up 20% of the exam. Here we focus on things like physical security, authentication, different methods of controlling access to devices. There's a big discussion on securing wireless networks, and you need to know quite a bit about that. What are some of the different options for wireless network security? What encryption algorithms are used by WPA versus WPA2? What about different extensible authentication protocols? You'll also want to be comfortable describing different types of network attacks that you might have to fend against and ways of mitigating those attacks. And while security itself is a massive topic, CompTIA has their own security track of certifications, in fact. In this section, you do want to know quite a bit about the basics of security 
and a collection of basic best practices that we can apply to our network. And in the final major section of the course, we're talking about network troubleshooting and the tools we would use to do troubleshooting. This makes up a whopping 22% of the exam score, so there's a lot of focus here. First up, you want to know CompTIA's version of the seven-step troubleshooting model. And I say CompTIA's version because, for example, Cisco, they have a seven-step troubleshooting model, but it's slightly different than CompTIA's. You'll want to know CompTIA's for the exam. You'll want to be comfortable with different tools that are used for troubleshooting, including a set of command line commands that you can use to do troubleshooting in both the Microsoft Windows and Unix or Linux environments. And CompTIA also identifies a collection of troubleshooting issues for wired networks and also for wireless networks. And finally in that section, CompTIA says that you need to be able to troubleshoot specific network services. And I mentioned earlier that you're going to be faced with multiple choice questions on the exam as well as performance-based questions. What is a performance-based question? That's where you're actually doing something. You're interacting with an interface. And if you want some practice with that, I created a shortcut for you, kwtrain.com slash pbq for a performance-based question. And that will take you out to CompTIA's website where they have a sample performance-based question. I think it's for Microsoft Windows 10. So it's not directly related to the Network Plus exam, but it gives you an idea of what it's like to do one of their performance-based questions. And I hope this quick overview of the exam has given you a better sense for what to expect if you're going to be going down that track. And if you've been studying for the prior version of the exam, but you really want to take this version of the exam, I encourage you to really read carefully through that exam blueprint of topics that I gave you the link to download on screen. Because you're going to see that CompTIA has added several topics and removed a few topics as well. I think some of the more exciting topics that they've added include some emerging technologies like SDN, Software Defined Networking, and IoT, the Internet of Things. And having personally taken several versions of CompTIA's Network Plus exam over the last couple of decades, I'm a big fan of this exam. I like the structure. I like the content. And you might know that I created a complete video course for the prior version of the exam the N10-006 exam. Well, great news. I'm just about to complete, this is March 2018 when I'm saying this, I'm just about to complete the complete video course for this version of the exam. And I have meticulously gone through that PDF I was telling you to download, and I've made sure to cover every single topic in that list of topics. And I think that would be a great resource for you if you're going to be going after this exam. It's not available for sale yet. I'm just about to finish it up, and I'm due to turn it over to Pearson, mid-April. My guess is they'll have it for sale around the end of May. And when it comes out, I'll certainly make announcements about that on my blog at kwtrain.com, as well as my podcast called The Broadcast Storm. I think you'll really enjoy that course. But for now, we'll go ahead and wrap up this video where I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what to expect and what the format looks like on CompTIA's brand new Network Plus exam.